From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss why collecting more of the right kind of data is crucial for winning with AI models. Joining us is Alex Markarski, who is the founder of Clickmakers.io, which has been working with big data since before there was a name for it. Consulting for brands like McDonald's, P&G, and Simmons, Alex has served as the CTO or CMO on the executive team of several technology companies and is now certified by AdSkills, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, the Trade Desk, Stack Adapt, all sorts of great platforms. And he and his team have managed millions of dollars of monthly ad spend for organizations ranging from open source software to lead generations and from digital products to e-commerce. He's a wealth of knowledge, and we're excited to have Alex on our podcast today. And today, Alex and I are going to talk about his theory that whoever has the most data wins. All right, here's the first part of my conversation with Alex Markarski, the founder of Clickmakers.io. Alex, welcome to the MarTech Podcast. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to it. Excited to have you on the podcast. You know, you have been around, seen a thing or two, worked with a couple of incredible companies. I've got a few miles on me. You look young. You look ready to keep rolling. I drive a 1994 Ford Explorer with 194,000 miles on it. You look better than my car. (laughs) I don't know if that's a compliment. It's not saying much, but uh, you look great. (laughs) You've definitely had some wonderful experience. We're off to a fiery start here. Let's cut to the chase a little bit. You've got this theory that whoever has the most data wins. I generally think that it's whoever understands their customer the best, tends to perform the best, and then they're able to collect the most data. Why is the world data-driven to you? Well, here's what happened in the last 15 years, let's just say, maybe 10, 12, 15 years, depending on where you put the line in the sand on the timeline. But digital media buyers have been working with machine learning type algorithms for a very long time. Everyone's going gaga over chat GPT right now and all the AI tools popping up everywhere. But digital marketers have been working with data-driven machines for a very long time. Maybe without understanding very well the mechanics of them, maybe not quite understanding what they had in their hands and what they had to work with and fighting the machines and resisting them or pushing back. But we need to understand that in the digital media buying, we gave up the most important job that we had in the early days, which is setting the bid value like figuring out which auctions to enter and how much to bid on each auction. Like this job has been delegated to the machine a very long time ago and machines are getting better and better at this. And the machine can only be as good as the data that you can train it on. So essentially, think of it this way. Every impression of an ad that takes milliseconds, like every web page that's loading on your phone or your computer screen, there's an ad placement. And as this page is loading, as this ad is trying to show up there, the machine is running a real-time auction behind the scenes. So there's a bunch of advertisers bidding for this spot. Now there's no human behind the scenes twisting the knobs, trying to figure out which auction they're going to enter and how much they're going to pay. That job is done by the machine in real time. So we, as media buyers, our job is that we have to become half data mechanics, half media buyers, because we need to feed the clean data back to the machine, create this feedback loop, train it. It's called reinforcement learning, machine learning. But basically, it's like training the dog. It's very similar. Think of it, the data you feed back, those are doggy treats. The machine does something you want the machine to do again, you reward it. You send this conversion signal back. You don't want it to do it again, you don't give it the cookie, you don't give it the doggy treat. That's why in the long term, the like whoever has better data is going to win because they have the ability to train the machine better. No, I mean, I get you in in the sense that real-time bidding is a technology that's been developed over the last 10, 15 years. I remember 
I worked at eBay in the mid 2000s and they were building out a real time bidding engine that integrated directly into like AOL's ad network, right? And to figure out what advertising placement they were going to bid on to try to drive someone to their site that then hopefully entered in an eBay auction and gave revenue to the company. And this seemed like it was a huge innovation at the time. And now it seems like table stakes. Whenever you're buying media, unless you're directly buying through a specific advertiser, you're going through a real-time bidding engine. You're saying what you want to spend and letting the algorithm figure out how to allocate your budget. And to me, that means that the world is not data-driven, that it's the companies, since we are not actually using the data, it's the companies that have a better understanding of what the conversion signal and what positive ROI actually is, are going to win. Do you know who your customer is? And then can you identify when the real-time bidding is actually happening to drive the revenue so you know to give the cookie or the dog treat back to the metaphorical dog or the AI-driven machine? Am I wrong? Am I right here? Is it about customers? Is it about data volume? Tell me your thoughts. It's about all of those things. You're absolutely correct. It's about understanding the psychology of the customer, their journey. You go back to the days when real-time bidding was introduced and how crude and very rough it was back in the day. Now the ad network has access to literally thousands of signals inside every auction. So the same person, the same demographic, same me sitting at my desk in front of my computer represents different auction, different value to the advertiser than the same me at the 7-Eleven standing in line waiting to pay for my gas and pulling up something, you know, like a news article on my phone. That's what machines have been able to adjust to so I agree with you that it's all about understanding customer and what represents the conversion, but also it's about understanding who is a good customer, who is not such a good customer. As an agency that spends other people's money online, the most common mistake I see is that people are still are stuck in the mentality of 1980s, 1990s advertising, where a lot of your advertising would go to channels like direct mail or radio, TV, where delivering the same ad impression, so to speak, would cost you the same regardless of the value of the customer. So the postal stamp is the same. So if you're doing direct mail, it costs you the exact same amount of money to deliver mail to this address or that address. You know, even those two houses sitting right by side, like on the same street, like neighbors, they may represent very different value to your auction, but postal stamp is the same. So what we used to do, let's say you're selling something, each transaction is worth a thousand bucks to you, and you need a hundred leads to close one transaction. That means each lead is worth 10 bucks to you. Well, I would argue that there's among those leads, there's one lead that's worth a thousand bucks and 99 that are worth exactly zero. We just don't know which one of those 100 is worth a thousand bucks. That's the issue, right? That's the way it used to be. And this math worked out okay in the old school channels, like where the cost of delivering the message to a specific node, to a specific customer, to a specific impression, so to speak, was the same. But nowadays, each auction represents a very different value. And most networks are multi-channel nowadays. So you go on Google, you launch a performance max campaign. What's performance max? It's a multi-channel strategy. It's one bucket where you dump a bunch of money and it starts spending this money across search, shopping, display, video, discovery. Gmail, everywhere that Google goes, it starts spending money. And the impression on search, which is high intent, high value, that impression is worth a lot more than some very low intention, very low value impression on the display network, possibly in some park domain or bot infested fake content site. But what happens nowadays is everyone's running a conversion objective for their campaigns. Like if you direct response advertise a performance marketer, so to speak, like you're running a conversion objective, something like target CPA, and you're saying, well, I want leads at 10 bucks. So your TCPA is $10. Where do you think is Google going to find those $10 CPAs? On search, on display. Like, where is it easier for Google? It's going to find the path of least resistance. So it's just going to find you a bunch of fake conversions, spam bots coming from display or some other low value placement instead of search. So the nature of digital advertising means nowadays, like it's very different from the networks we used to rely on. A lot of the stuff that the Don Draper type agencies used, or like if we go back to Claude Hopkins, like all this methodology, all this math that we borrow from 100 years ago, is still valid. But we need to understand that there's this very important component now that all networks are multi-channel and we're delegating to the computer the right to choose which auction to go into. 
What you're getting into, and I understand that not all placements and not all advertising channels are created equal. A high intent search lead is inherently more valuable than a low intent social network lead. But in reality, when somebody clicks, I don't know how much it matters what channel they come from. Maybe there's some indication of they're farther down the buying funnel when they're clicking on search and the search term is a bottom of funnel term. Buying athletic shoes is different than who makes athletic shoes. But my point here is if I am targeting not specifically the channel or even the keyword where somebody is in the cycle, but I'm targeting the right consumer. I am looking for CEOs who are in market to buy podcasts and they're looking for a production house that charges between $600 to $1,200 per episode, right? If I can target that specific person and get them to my website, in theory, I don't care whether they come from Google, Facebook, TikTok, or whether they walked in the front door, right? As long as they get there, that's what matters to me if they are the appropriate targeting. How do you balance the difference in the medium that someone comes in from, the specific ad or the keyword that you're targeting, and then the sort of demographic piece of who the actual person is that you're targeting and whether they're getting to interact with your site or your properties? The way you balance it, and then going back to the data-driven approach that we started talking about, you essentially need to build your own model, like no new customer. You're having historical data. You understand what kind of prospects, what kind of clicks, what kind of actions lead to a conversion that you're ultimately looking for. And everyone's looking for revenue. The problem with lead gen is that you have the first conversion event removed on the timeline from the ultimate conversion event, which is revenue. And sometimes that time lag can be not just days or weeks, can be months or years. Like if it's a high ticket situation, like very often leads need to sit in the pipeline for a while before they ripen and become closable, so to speak. So when you get a lead, you don't know if this lead is any good, but you may have a better idea if you collect a little bit of extra information, like maybe you run them through a survey and ask a few questions. Maybe you augment this data that's coming in with some third-party data. You did a data append and based on this data, you can figure out things like credit scores, the amount of mortgage, you know, and that kind of stuff that gives us a consumer facing space. If it's a B2B situation, you want to verify that this person does have a title that you're targeting, that, that it, you know, still employed at the company that you're targeting, that in the right industry, right geo, and that kind of stuff. You clear bit the shit out of it. Well, as long as you trust the clear bit data in the first place, because you may want to build your own heuristics or a machine learning model. Like what you can do is take your historical data and look at all the conversions that have already happened in your CRM, just dump it into a big thing throw an algorithm on it and build a machine learning model, and then use this model that you've built for yourself to train the media network algorithm on. And it's universal. It doesn't matter if you're running Google, Facebook, programmatic, native, they all work more or less the same way. Basically, it's reinforcement learning. They just need to have better signal, like more signal, less noise. Whereas if we just send the network a thank you note every time they give us a crap lead, they will continue sending us crappy leads. So that needs to stop. We have this initial span, like if we're starting something new, we buy data essentially, we get in a bunch of leads, then we need to be able to disqualify a lot of them as quickly as possible. A lot of people who just start as search marketers, like if they run search campaigns and they start expanding to performance max, or they launch their YouTube campaigns for the first time, all of a sudden, if you go into media buying forums, everyone's complaining that they're getting a lot of fake leads right now. Like there's like made up email names and fake names, and these are not real conversions. The question is where are they coming from? And the answer is, well, there's a lot of traffic fraud online in this bots and this click farms and bots of people who will fill out their forms just to attract your ads to their content site. Before we get down into the bots and click farms, because I do want to spend some time talking about that, but I want your advice. For newer media buyers, coming from somebody who's worked with some of the biggest brands in the world and you've run media campaigns and done analytics, what is the way that you think about leveraging the data that you have and understanding if you have enough data to be successful as a media buyer? I don't think there's a fast and easy way to know like, if you have enough data. Basically work with the data you have and you try to come up with the best model for your ICP. 
like you said, you try to learn about your customer and there's so many ways to do that. But what you're trying to do is when those leads come in, you want to figure out very quickly if this lead is worth 500 bucks or five bucks, or maybe it's a negative five bucks because like, it would clutter up your call center and your salespeople are going to complain and will waste their time just trying to follow up with this lead. So essentially, you want to have some type of a lead score, quality score for your leads as they're coming in based on the data you're able to collect as they're coming in. And uh, you want to be able to augment it with maybe some third-party data or your CRM data. At the end of the day, your media buying is only as effective as your ability to feed whatever system you're going through conversion data. Yes, you absolutely need to be able to understand who your customer is. You need to be able to feed the right data in. But if you can't feed what the outputs are back to the platform you're using, you don't get the feedback loop. You don't allow the machine learning, the algorithms optimize for what you're truly trying to accomplish, which is revenue. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Alex Markarski, the founder of ClickMakers.io. Join us again tomorrow when Alex and I continue our conversation when we talk about if your leads are humans or are they bots. If you can't wait until our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Alex, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter where his handle is Alex Markarski. That's A-L-E-X-M-A-K-A-R-S-K-I. Or you can visit his company's website, which is clickmakers.io. That's his digital advertising agency. Or you could also go to measurebit.com, which is his data consultancy. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap. B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy.